So, uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you to the organizers for inviting uh, a representative from the European Commission. And let me start on a positive note. On Friday, two days ago, we sent through the final compliance report for the third review, confirming that all 110 prior actions have been completed, and that will unlock a disbursement of 6.7 billion euros, most of that coming from the ESM in the next, by the middle of March. Uh, and so this is a very welcome news. That has unlocked the discussions, or the start of discussions, on the reforms, the 88 key deliverables, which are required for the fourth and final review of the ESM program. We have had a positive start to those discussions. Teams from all four institutions were in Athens last week discussing this. Uh, it's challenging, but it's doable. And the aim is to get these reforms wrapped up, ideally by May, no later than June, so that uh, there can be a successful conclusion of the ESM program. And right now, our assessment is that Greece is on a trajectory that can result in a successful conclusion of the program on time. Let me turn to the subject of the panel, debt sustainability, and just a few additional comments on how the Commission will be approaching this debate in the coming months. So, we uh, published, uh, as part of our compliance report, an update of our debt sustainability analysis. And like other speakers have commented or observed, nominal debt to GDP ratios are very, very high. But, as Klaus and others stressed, one has to take a look at the composition, maturity structure, concessional interest rates of the debt to get a true picture of, 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 the, of the situation. But our assessment in the Commission, based on that debt sustainability analysis published two days ago, is indeed that additional debt measures over and above what has been done already will be needed under prudent assumptions to put debt on a sustainable trajectory. Now, the good news, confirmed by Klaus, is that European partners have a, have a strong track record in delivering upon the commitments which they have made in terms of debt sustainability. Back in 2012, more recently with colleagues in the SM 2017. The other part of our assessment is that actually the scale and composition of the debt measures which the Eurogroup in two statements, May 2016, June 2017, those potential debt measures which will be decided in June they can suffice to put Greece or put debt on a sustainable trajectory. And we need to work within the parameters of what the Eurogroup has committed could be done. Now, like others, uh, the discussion on debt sustainability is not only a discussion on debt measures, it's actually, if not mostly, a discussion about growth. And no amount of debt relief measures will result in a structural improvement in the competitiveness of the Greek economy or a modern public administration which are needed to deliver growth. I think though equally, let's be honest, no amount of structural reforms is going to result in debt becoming sustainable on its own right. You've got to combine the two. And actually, in a sense, that's the challenge that we as policymakers face in the coming months to actually, in a sense, come up with an overall package deal that creates, not only achieves, let's say, confidence of markets that debt is sustainable up front, but actually is craft, we have to craft a, 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 an overall deal which is incentive compatible, which provides confidence to markets, but also the right incentives for Greece to stick to sound economic policies in the years to come. I'm not calling, we're not suggesting that there needs to be new fiscal measures or, or new measures or, you know, or, or, or that there needs to be additional policy reforms to be put on the agenda right now. It's essentially about the implementation of all of the structural reforms that have been legislated and started to be implemented under the program. I think that's the key, the key part. A couple of final words, uh, going into a little bit more detail. We have started to work on the debt relief package that could be implemented uh, at the end of the program. Specifically, together with Klaus and his colleagues, we have been working on a French proposal to uh, think about an automatic mechanism which links uh, the, the reprofiling of EFSF loans 
to nominal growth rates in the future. And we think this is a promising idea. We think it makes sense. Uh, I don't know what growth will be next year. I have no idea what growth, I mean, I can make a guess, but realistically, I have no idea, even based here in Delphi, what growth will be in 2030, <laughs> 2040. So it makes sense to you know, deal with that uncertainty through an automatic mechanism uh, so that additional measures can be provided if growth turns out worse than what we think in our baseline scenarios. At the same time, there are also upside risks. Gro you, know, you, you may be surprised, you may surprise yourselves, uh, growth could actually turn out to be better than expected. Look what happened in Latvia, look what happened in Ireland. And I think it's only fair to European taxpayers that they're asked to provide sufficient but not excessive debt relief and this mechanism can help take care of it. Final point, and I, I don't need to go into detail because the others have run through it, uh, it's a package deal which has to be crafted okay, in, in, in June. Now one part of that is a building up a cash buffer and actually 1.9 billion of the 5.7 billion which will be dispersed by the ESM in the coming weeks is actually specifically dedicated to building up a cash buffer. But we also need to look at those other elements, the potential maturity extensions, deferral of interest payments, the, uh, the, the possible liquidity management operations to shift, as George Zanias was saying, repay perhaps some of the more expensive shorter term loans. One idea which we in the Commission will be paying attention to is the reinstatement of the return of SMP equivalent profits. You know, could that be linked to, uh, let's say, positive investments on, you know, positive public uh, spending, if you will, on, on, on things which can help kickstart growth in the near term? So what I'm trying to get at is, we have to, the key thing for us is not only the scale of the debt measures, but actually crafting a package that provides the right incentives for everybody. Thank you.